Good afternoon. So you're here for the uh, How to Become the Personal Brand You Were Born to Be webinar. Um, we're going to make a start in, uh, we'd normally start at 12.01, so we'll just uh, wait for a minute just to uh, let any uh, stragglers join. If you've joined us, you're very, very welcome. And um, at the moment, you're uh, you're all muted. We found that that works, uh, works best. There will be an opportunity to have a conversation and to ask questions. Um, at the end of the presentation, which normally takes uh, somewhere between 25 and 30 minutes, so at least plenty of time to have a chat at the end. Uh, so just bear with us for a second, and I'm just going to have a drink of tea to keep my throat lubricated, uh, and we'll start shortly. Okay, so it's 12.01, so uh, let's go. So these are this is a slightly different webinar to the ones that we've done so far. It's our 21st uh, LinkedIn webinar. Uh, this time we're talking more about the why rather than the how. Most of what we've done so far is the how, but without the why, the how doesn't work as well. And um, we're gonna explore one of my kind of um, favorite uh, ideas, which is, that when an acorn, uh, an acorn contains the full oak tree and uh, likewise uh, a human being contains within a nutshell when they're born, uh, their whole, um, their, 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 who they're going to become, if that makes sense. Uh, and uh, Jung talks about um, this being a process of embodying your essence, uh, the essential in you. There's lots of other metaphors for it as well. Uh, but really it's about how you, your personal brand can reflect who you were born to be, not some construct that's been created by a marketer or or by um, a journalist or 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 some coach who you've worked with, but but to uh, reveal the authentic you, the real you, the uh, the you that you were born to be. Uh, so I'm going to explore some of, um, or we're going to explore together, some of uh, those uh, aspects um, within the presentation. So with, I'm sure you can read those for yourself. I'm not going to read them out, but we're going to say, I'm going to say you're very, very welcome. And I think this journey for me probably could, I could have the starting point be various different times, but I think to some extent it began uh, in the 1970s uh, when I was dancing uh, in a youth club and uh, I had a sudden kind of sense of real deep inspiration and literally uh, it brought me to tears and I could not, explain in any way uh, what was going on but but looking back on it now um, I can kind of see that that was kind of the seed of, of what I'm now doing um, and um, so 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 fast forward to uh, March 2016 which is when uh, I formed the digital agency called Digital Freelance so you can see our uh, logo uh, here that we created after um, after one of our as a as a preparation for one of our other webinars uh, but this is the time we're going to talk more about personal branding and how do you reveal uh, more of you um so march 2016 i formed digital freelance which is our marketing agency and our, the third member of our team um is rubin he's on the call as well uh he's a very good digital marketer uh, and he's going to introduce himself now thanks graham hi everyone i hope you're having a good day so far um, today I'll basically just be monitoring the chat, so if you have any questions, feel free to put them in there and I'll try to answer them. If I can't though, we'll circle back to them at the question and answer session at the end. Um, and if at any point you decide you'd like the slides uh, to be sent to you after the webinar's finished, just put slides please in the chat and I'll make sure you get those later today. Um, and I'll also, thank you Ruben, I'll also be referring to some of the earlier videos that we've made of earlier webinars, uh, which are not available uh, to the public that are um, that are uh, unlisted on YouTube. So if I refer to one of those and you'd like a copy, I'll invite you to just uh, put the name of the video uh, into the chat box and we'll send it to you. Um, so I think, yeah, so, so we specialize uh, in uh, a particular USP that came to me in a very unique way, which I'm going to get onto a little bit later on. Um, so without further ado, I think that's uh, enough uh, about us to um, to indicate where we're coming from. So uh, let's hear about you. So if you could introduce yourself, say a little bit about who you are, what you do, and what you want to learn from the webinar. Uh, if you could just type away in the chat box, that would be brilliant. And um, 
Ribbon will read out and that will help me to organize the presentation, uh, meet your needs and what you want to know about. So um, feel free to introduce yourself uh, and uh, I'll, Ruben will read that out and I'm going to meanwhile have a drink because my throat is a little dry. Uh, and it's perfectly okay if you're shy. You don't have to do this. Uh, if we don't get a response, we will um, we will continue. But it looks like we have got one response so far. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Zach is here, and he says CXO uh, techie moving to a marketing a lockdown startup. Hello, Zach. Nice to meet you. Thanks very much for joining us. Uh, yeah, you're definitely in the right place. We will uh, definitely cover some things that will be of value to you for sure. Uh, Alex is here as well, and he says, I set up a business pre-COVID focusing on education and consultancy around human performance. Hi, Alex. Nice to meet you. Thanks very much for joining us. Um, we'll definitely uh, cover some things that will be useful for you too. Okay, so that looks like what we're going to get so far. So, Oh, gonna... hang on. We just, we just got a few there at the same time. Let me, let me go back then. <laughs> uh, <laughs> So Vishali is here and he says, I'm a marketer and coach looking to build my communications coaching business and travel adventures. Hello, Vishali. You're very welcome. Uh, Debbie says, I would like to know how to market myself to attract clients. And she is currently coaching in the veterin veterinary sector. Oh, hi, Debbie. Nice to meet you. Thanks very much for joining us. Darren says, I run a small consultancy business focusing on cybercrime, fraud, compliance, uh, Sorry, cybercrime, fraud, and compliance for data protection. Uh, he's just looking for ideas on developing his business, and he also runs events. Hi, Darren. You're very, very welcome. Thanks for joining us. And finally, Steve says, I'm a coach and mentor coming from a senior marketing and sales background, interested in how to differentiate me and my practice. Oh, brilliant. Yeah, we're definitely going to cover that. So hi, Steve. You're also very welcome. So let's, without further ado, oops, get into... Um, this is this is this is a book that I highly recommend reading. Um, and as I was explaining at the beginning, we're going to go into a slightly more uh, deeper or a soulful or spiritual uh, way of finding your personal brand. It looks like we've got another person. So do you want to read that out as well, Ruben, and then we'll continue? Yeah, sure. Yeah, Shumba says I am a stand for empowering the woman and entrepreneur to become more confident and courageous, to know her worth, and to end any limiting beliefs so that she can walk head high, work smarter, enjoy time, freedom and financial independence and live her dream life on her own terms. That's fantastic. Thank you for joining us, Shuma. And though we've talked on LinkedIn several times, so it's great that you could make it. Um, so yeah, as I was saying, I'm going to explore this from a more spiritual, more soulful, more personal point of view, if that makes sense. Um, this book, I highly recommend, The Soul's Code in Search of Character and Calling. Um, the, this, so, so we're going to talk about how do you pull together all the strands of your business and even your life into a single image uh, and how do you find the basic plot of your story so that you can tell a story. One of, one of the basics of, um, of marketing uh, and selling as well is, is facts tell, story sell. And so the better that you can articulate your story, the, the, the more you will draw to you, the people who, who need your help, who need your services. So that's what that's a fairly large chunk uh, of this particular uh, webinar. And, and we're going to explore the idea that that you you have a, a genius or a, a, a demon, a, a daemon, a demon, a daemon, D-A-I-M-O-N, which is your uniqueness that makes you unique and that will enable you when you dig deeper to find your true self and to represent that authentically to the market more and more those kind of stories are what's resonating if you look on linkedin now for example personal stories stories of struggle and, and overcoming problems are really really uh, getting a lot of traction uh, at the moment and authentic stories that, that's what i would say more than anything else is tell your story not someone else's uh that that's uh, that's a really top tip from this i think so, so we're going to explore the proposition that finding your personal brand is like revealing more of you, your coherent image and the plot of your story as the heart and soul of your business. And I think we've got someone else who's just commented. Is that true? 
Uh, yeah, Shimbo just followed up and said, I'm very interested in individual uniqueness because that's her passion. All right, fantastic, fantastic. Well, we're definitely going to come to that, so, so you're definitely in the right place. Um, so these are the six things uh, we're going to cover. Um, way, way, way back, I think in 2014, I developed uh, the SPICE model, which is sole purpose, inspire, create, and engineer. Uh, recently, I've added in a sixth uh, part, which is uh, uh, D, which is um, uh, the dream big uh, aspect of um, of the SPICE model. Uh, so we're going to get into that step by step. Uh, you can read what's on the slide, so I don't need to read it for you. So without further ado, let's dive into uh, the next bit, which is uh, dig deeper to reveal the soul in your business. One of my passions, as you can probably see from this T-shirt, is, is I'm a DJ. Uh, I do live streams uh, every Friday uh, on Facebook, Twitch, uh, Mixcloud, and YouTube. And th that that whole thing came about as a result of a few kind of experiment experiences in my life. One of them, the one I was talking about earlier when I was uh, dancing. Uh, in other words, I remember when I was in the corporate world and I was kind of kept my passion or my creativity kind of well hidden. So. So I remember someone saying to me, uh, Chris uh, said to me, oh, I, I hear you also DJ. And I said, oh yeah, but I don't like to talk about it as though that was kind of another part of my life or something. Uh, but recently, uh, a very good friend of mine, Hugh, uh, I went to one of his events. Uh, in, I say recently, it was probably three years ago. I went to an event in Brighton and I suddenly got inspired again and and said, hey, can I DJ? And so I, that, that kind of got me back into DJing. Uh, and I'll explain in a moment why that's uh, why that's an important step as well. In in marketing, I also wrote an email uh, called Pink Floyd Punk or Northern Soul, which was a story uh, from my uh, from my youth, my misspent youth, as it were. When I used to go to uh, youth clubs in Doncaster, uh, St George's Youth Club, particularly, and at that time, I was really into soul. But the, a lot of the people who were my generation were into punk. So to, as a compromise, there would be like three soul records played, so all the soul leads would get up and dance. That would like include me. Then there would be three punk records played, and all the punks would pogo and jump around and hit their head on the ceiling, that kind of thing. But when I was at school, this was when I was in the sixth form, if most of my colleagues in the sixth form were into Pink Floyd and very kind of cerebral um, uh, music. So... So, so literally from that email, Roy Stanard, who's become a very good friend of mine, and got in touch with him and said, oh, this is a really, really good email. It goes really in detail. The key to it is that it was authentic and it was it was in depth. It went really deep uh, into my personal experience. And as a result of that, uh, we now, uh, I've now introduced another one of my clients to Roy and we're potentially going to do business together. So, so the key of this is that your passion, your creativity, your joy in your life, your love does go together with um, with your with your business life. If that makes sense, that's the soul in your business will most likely be something that that will that will resonate across. It will resonate with a certain audience, uh, even in your marketing. Authentic stories really make a massive difference, and and often. It's so obvious to you that you that you don't even think of it. So one exercise that I got from Perry Marshall is is to write out to, I think I wrote to seven or eight people, asking them what my strengths were and what was I good at. And um, I'll, I'm going to come to that um, a little more in depth. We've also done this for many of our clients uh, in terms of um, finding the soul in their business and creating a um, what's called a story brand video, which I'm going to come to uh, later on in the presentation. So this is, to do this, this is really inner work and, it, and it's going really deep inside yourself to find to find what makes you different, what makes you unique. Uh, so so that's, the, um, that's the soul part. So for the next uh, part of the SPICE model is purpose. It's really, really important to find out why you're in business. So, so I know um, from having worked with a lot of, we specialize in trainers, coaches, and consultants, uh, and tech businesses, and many of them go into business to use a, a particular talent or skill that they developed in the corporate world. That's brilliant. For me, it was NLP. So I ran an NLP training business for a while, um, but I, 
and I and I I always thought in terms of transformation. Transformation is is the key to effective marketing and stories that explain that transformation is what really makes it makes the difference and really makes makes it work makes marketing work because it's authentic. I know I've I'm gone banging on about that, but it's really important. For other people, it's uh, an expression of their creativity, that what I call a divine spark. Uh, that is definitely uh, um, what 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 caused me to bring together my DJing, my creative expression, uh, with marketing, uh, which should, which traditionally will be two very uh, different disciplines, but they fit together for me, if that makes sense. So that's understand your purpose, why you're in business. Again, that's kind of an inner piece of work. So um, many many brands start with a back, what's called a backstory, uh, which is um, I've been telling you some of my backstory has been going along, uh, and often it relate. There's a major transformation or decision point in your life that caused you to go uh, into business. For me, it was uh, going to an NLP workshop, and something inside me went, "Wow, this is amazing!" And so I went on a journey from there. Uh, to learn NLP and eventually uh, got into uh, marketing. But it, but for me, my story is all about change and transformation and making a difference, making an impact for people. I'm sure if you dig deep within you, you'll start to find your story. And we're going to give you some ideas on how to do that in a moment. So, so back in 2014, this is where I first came up with the SPICE model. Um, and I told my story, uh, the, the branding is obviously very different to what it is now. Um, <laughs> excuse me. And I remember I told the story of I lived in Little Hampton. I'd been in business for eight years, six months and 19 days. And I was I had no electric and <laughs> excuse me, it's obviously making me cough. Uh, and I was living on baked beans and some of my ex-colleagues from the corporate world said, oh, Graham, you can't tell that story. That's too personal. It's too honest, you know, kind of thing. Uh, but it worked. And um, as a result of this, this was my first product launch uh, when I was a coach. Um, I got a client, an Australian guy. Uh, literally, we were having a meeting up in London. I went up to London to meet him as a result of this marketing campaign. Uh, he was taken ill, so I went to the hospital with him while he, while he uh, had his uh, into A and E, and he had various tests done, and then I kind of went away. And uh, a few days later, he became a client. So sometimes you you can't predict where where client where clients going to come from, but the more you can be authentic, the more um, the the more people will resonate with you. And, I, and literally, I developed this daily practice which was designed to test out the idea of the golden rule, do unto others as you would have others do unto you, um, which which is, which is loads of my friends and people I know and even some of my family telling me, you can't do business like this, Graham, that's not how it works. And I went, well, I think you can. Uh, and uh, eight years later, I'm presenting the model with a D added on the end, which is evidence that it does work. Um, and also to do like some something for you every day, which I call the one big thing I love to do every day. Business is a long haul. It's not like a five minute wonder. And it's really important to do something just for you that you really enjoy every day. For me, it's DJing. That's that's why, um, that's why I'm focusing on that uh, at the moment. Um, so storytelling is the best marketing. I've already emphasized that a few times, I think. This is the I part of the SPICE model. So you want to inspire your audience. Um, don't, but don't get too hung up on having the perfect narrative or decide your story is unimportant important, or you don't have a story to tell. You do have a story to tell. Everyone has a great story to tell. It's just a matter of digging deep uh, and finding that story that will resonate with your audience. Um, so this is me wearing my T-shirt, uh, DJing uh, in a pub just down the road. Um, I found uh, I would highly recommend finding an artist or a very good graphic designer to to vis visually represent you and what you do. So our graphic designer is uh, Wendy Ashman. Um, she's a very good uh, artist, a graphic designer. This is her logo here, and she also did the digital freelance logo as well, which is my uh, business or our business, our but not my business, our business logo. Um, and I also wrote a story brand script, which I'm going to get into a little bit more uh, in a moment. 
But again, if it's a bit scrappy around the edges, if it's not perfect, don't worry about it too much. Just keep it real and keep going. That's the most important thing. Before I did this DJ set, I was I was quite nervous and a bit kind of, oh, can I really do it? But it, this, because this was used in, I normally use um, analog decks. This was a digital setup, uh, Pioneer DJ, but it worked fine and the, the crowd loved it. And uh, so, so it was brilliant. And I, and I was telling stories through the music that I was playing, uh, all about soul, which is, a, which is a major theme in this presentation, as I'm sure you can appreciate. So, oh, so there we go. To uh, so, so this is another really useful book, uh, the seven basic plots and why we tell stories. Um, these are the seven basic plots of all stories, and these reoccur all throughout the world. So, the first one is overcoming the monster and the thrilling escape from death, uh, from death, which is uh, often a metaphor for. Well, I'll leave you to find your own uh, metaphor. I'm not going to. Uh, I'm not going to. Um, your thinking on that. Uh, Rags to Riches, um, the story that I uh, told earlier of the Biz Coach was a Rags to Riches story. The Quest, which is which I'm coming to in a moment, which is the um, story brand uh, formula. Uh, Voyage and Return, which is where you go on a quest uh, and then um, learn a load of stuff and then come back. Uh, comedy, which is, uh, which is also important in business. It's really important to have a sense of humor because not everything is going to go perfectly uh, as you plan it. Um, but uh, if you can if you can laugh uh, in adversity, then uh, then you know it gives you inspiration to keep going. Tragedy can also happen. I guess losing a client be a tragedy, uh, and rebirth, which is kind of continually reinventing yourself and um, doing uh, doing different things. We seem to be getting some more comments, Ruben. So do you want to just read them out? Yep, yeah, uh, Zach. Uh, asked uh, Vonnegut's anthropology master as a question. Say that again. I'm not, I'm not quite sure what that means. Oh, Vonnegut's. Oh, Kurt, Kurt Vonnegut's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. Fantastic. So, uh, so they're the seven basic plots. So here we go now uh, into Story Brand, which is the structure that we use to to write copy to build brands, and then we we create images that go with the um, with the story, which I'm going to show you in a moment. So the basic structure of story brand is a character. So you may be tempted to think that that character would be you, but in this case, that character is your potential client because you want to make your potential client or your existing client for that matter, a hero, the hero in the, uh, in the story. Your role is part three, which is you're the guide that helps the the, uh, the person, your prospective client who has a specific problem, which you're going to articulate for them. Typically, this is to articulate the thing that they're thinking about in their head, but they haven't actually spoken to anyone else. Um, I was talking to one of our clients the other day who's a um, team development consultant, and he does a little bit, he has done in the past stand-up comedy, and he was saying it's like stand-up where you're literally saying something that the person's kind of half thought, but they haven't actually articulated it all in one place. That's a, that's a really good metaphor for building a story brand. Um, and there's always, there's also another book called The Serious Guide to Joke, to joke Writing, which didn't make it into the presentation, but that's also a very good uh, read if you're looking to, um, to add a bit of humor into your story as well. So the, so the structure is a character who has a problem, who meets a guide, that's you, who gives them a plan. I'll show you in a moment what a plan looks like, uh, what, what the plan that we use looks like. We build these we build these for lots of our clients. If you want to see an example of that for a um, corporate coach, that is in uh, one of our videos. <laughs> I think it might be the... Um, uh, LinkedIn lead generation masterclass. But if you just uh, type in the um, executive coach uh, plan uh, video, then we'll make sure that you get a copy of that. Uh, calls them to action. That's really, really important. In order to make a transformation happen, someone has to take action, uh, helps them to avoid failure and ends in success. It's a really, really good structure. It works really well for, for telling uh, stories. It's based on um, the hero's journey, which I mentioned earlier. The hero in this case is the um, 
is your client or prospective client. Um, so yeah, I, t I talked about process. So we use this, uh, you can see the top right hand corner, we use a, we use a proven uh, eight step process, uh, which, which gives uh, clients confidence that, that we know what we're doing, which we do, uh, and, and we have a step by step. Uh, and then we also have a call to action, which is let's get started. Uh, we have a picture of the team. Uh, Connie's on there, who was our second uh, team member, who um, has now gone on to make a, a fortune in the city. Uh, and then um, uh, we one our our part of our USP is uh, guaranteed results. I'm going to come back to that in a moment. And we call this the digital freelance transformation. It's a video of about three minutes long. It's based on the story brand structure. If you want a copy of the video, just uh, type in digital freelance transformation and we will make sure you get a copy of it. Um, you can use it, you can model it to create, to, to see how the story brand structure works uh, in, uh, in action. Uh, so next step of the SPICE model. So we've done sole purpose, inspire, create. This is the engineer bit. Once, once you've worked out the story, you've worked out the narrative, you've worked out the image, then you want to reverse engineer the results that you deliver for your clients. Your clients will rarely, if ever, want consulting or coaching or training. What they want is the result that those marvelous and brilliant interventions deliver. So, so, so it's important to figure out what's the result that you deliver for your clients. This, once you've got that result, you can then distill the learning lessons or strategies or transformations that you've developed from your own journey and then uh, promise that to your to your client as a way of helping them to achieve the transformation or the result that they want and also to define your promise which is a really 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 key uh, aspect of marketing is defining uh, defining your promise and having a process for getting the results that you that you promise so this is the new development this is the new part of the spite this turned the spice into spiced uh, which is dream big uh, uh, after i'd run my uh, training and coaching business for probably 10 years i think I, I, I was kind of looking to do something more. Uh, and also I could see that I'd kind of exhausted my creativity in that particular domain. And uh, one morning uh, I woke up with a really clear um, a vision, I guess, of, 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 what, of what I wanted to do next, what, what our USP uh, for the marketing agency is. So I'm going to reveal that in a moment. Literally, when I woke up, I wrote it down. Many of the of my colleagues in marketing and branding and uh, in creative industries generally keep a notepad by the side of their bed, so that when they wake up, they can write in their in their notepad. Because some of these thoughts or dream recollections can be quite ephemeral unless you write them down quickly. Um, so you, you can see here. I'm going to reveal here. This is how I uh, mind map uh, the thoughts that I have in the middle of the night, normally about half past three. Um, highly uh, recommended, but the so at the time I was working with this uh, book, which I also recommend, which is towards an archaeology of the soul. Um, I was watching a video by Seth Godin yesterday. He was saying that all marketing, all presentation in particular, is performance. Uh, this uh, book is all about performance, and as a result of working with this, uh, I came up with a really clear idea: small business marketing with guaranteed results, which is painted. Uh, over the front of our uh, office uh, and has been our USP um, since we began uh, and it's still our USP. So this is this is when you're dreaming, your, your critical faculties are, are absent. So you're getting information more directly from somewhere bigger than you. I'm not gonna give it a name, but let's just call it somewhere bigger than you. Um, so yeah, highly recommend uh, this book um, and there's various uh, exercises and um, ideas uh, for uh, developing your dreams uh, and dreaming big uh, without the constraints of, um, of uh, rationality. I'm not saying there isn't a place for rationality, that's the other 20 webinars. This, uh, this one is more the inspirational, the um, bigger than self uh, side of the equation. So, Without further ado, I'm going to uh, leave you with a question. Are you ready to become the personal brand you were born to be?
this this picture here looks remarkably like my desk actually so it's a little bit a uh, little bit um actually it's more tidy than my desk but it's got a lot of stuff on it uh so oh uh, if you need our support, we'd love to uh, love to help. Um, it's my um, Ruben and I's absolute passion to do this, and um, I offer a twenty-minute free chat. Or if you've got any questions, or saw you know you've got some inspiration from this presentation, you want to have a chat. It's free, no obligation whatsoever. I can answer any questions that you've got. Um, here's a link that you can use to uh, to book. Um, it also, we obviously also offer paid services as well. So if you want to become a client of ours or go on a journey with us, we'd be very, very happy to to work with you, provided that you're a good fit. Obviously, we don't we don't work with everybody, only people who we know we can get results for. And the result that we aim for, uh, if it's a marketing strategy, is 10x, 10 times the investment. Uh, for a marketing execution, it's four times the investment. So, so we do four times ROI in four to six months, um, and uh, we'll take you on a journey. If that makes sense. But this is just a twenty-minute chat. I'd love to have a chat with you. Um, feel free to book a time. Um, we'll have a, a twenty-minute chat on Zoom, and uh, we'll just explore um, where you are. And uh, often, the the um, the uniqueness or or your the soul of your business uh, comes out of those conversations. So, have you got any questions? Uh, if you'd like, you can unmute yourself now and ask Graham directly. Or if uh, you'd prefer, you can type in the chat and I'll read it out. Thanks, Ruben. Hi. Hi, hi, Graham. Thanks very much for that. It's Steve here. We, we spoke before, but uh, really interesting. Thanks very much. Um, I, I just wonder whether you might comment on something that you said is that um, a lot of what you do and a lot of what coaches and, and mentors and so on do is to produce results for clients. Yeah. The clients, you know, the, the process is, is all, what, what are good, but the result is one of the key things. So I'm interested in how you see what you do as part yeah. of a wider group of people that might support a client. It might not just be <clears throat> a coach or a marketing agency or what have you. So. Yeah, the combination of those get the results. Any one of them, you know, how much can they ascribe the result to the work that they do with the client? Yes, yeah, totally. Now, I, I, I'm a great believer in holistic approaches. So, uh, I used when I used to work with coaches a long, long time ago, they would say, "Oh, we got you that result," and I go, "Yeah, but I'm also doing the all these other things." And I think as as you, my in fact, my training business used to be called Whole Being. Uh, and that's what it is all about. And in order to be, well, it depends how you define success, I would say. But if your definition of success is to make a difference in the world, which is kind of what most either coaches or clients of coaches want on some level, then pretty well you will need a team around you. And that was one of the big insights that I got is it was not just about what any one person can bring. Um, it's about a collection of individuals who are working together. And I've learned from friends, I've learned from work colleagues, I've learned from clients, I've learned from my team, I've learned from my family. So so it's all it's I think it's very difficult to identify, oh yeah, that one person made the change because normally it's an accretion of different activities that happen a along the way, if that makes sense. Did, did that answer your question? I, I, absolutely, and and uh, I, I like that you you know recommended some books because I think as a coach sometimes it's the book that you recommend to a client that helps them make the greatest change. Yeah. Just being purely a, a someone that introduces that, you don't have to necessarily do all the work. You, you even just revealing that to a client could be you know really useful for them. But yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was I was, I was I was talking to a colleague of mine this morning and. We were saying that you can't do the inner work for someone. You can you can help them in the external, but the inner work they have to do themselves. I think. And there's also a thing that you can't teach someone unless they already know. So I think that's uh, that. They're my they're my philosophies. I used to when I was a coach a long long time ago. I used to believe that I was kind of the superhero who was coming in to, you know, make massive change. But I realized a, a long time ago, it's not actually true. <laughs> so but it's a useful stage of development to go through. Thank you. 
It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Have we spoken before? We, we have, Grant. We've had a couple of chats before, yeah. <laughs> All right, brilliant. Oh, nice to see you again anyway. Thanks for, uh, thanks for asking the question. So, are there any more questions? Well, I'll ask one more question. Yeah, go for <laughs> it. Go for it. <laughs> um, I'm interested in whose personal brand, thinking anywhere around the world, you think is 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 um, it has greatest clarity, or who who do you think has great clarity in their personal brand? I I would I would go. I would go more for authenticity than than clarity. Personally, that would be my that would be my um, my take on that because you could have a clear brand, but it may not be authentic. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so I think um, Donald Trump has a very clear brand, which is very, <laughs> but he's not authentic. So, so I wouldn't I, I wouldn't choose that as an I would choose that an exemplar of the opposite of a of a good brand. Um, I would say, I, I think the I think the people who are probably most authentic very often don't have a brand that that would be instantly recognizable, if that makes sense. If you're, the more you try and appeal to the masses, very often the brand is an exaggeration of a few characteristics. I think Gordon Ramsay is a good example. He's got a very strong personal brand. I don't believe that the sweary, shouty Gordon Ramsay is the real Gordon Ramsay, if that makes sense. It's one aspect of him that's been exaggerated for for to, to give him a very recognizable brand. But I would I I personally prefer a more holistic brand where where it's like if you met him in the street or if you watch him on TV, it would be a similar. That you would have a similar experience. Not if someone's. I would. I would liken it to. Uh, I had this conversation with a friend of mine the other day. If you if you go to the pub with someone, it's, uh, apologies for anyone who doesn't drink alcohol, but I use this as a metaphor. And th and they have a few drinks, and they become someone who's very very different to when they haven't had a drink. That's an indication that they're not authentic. And I think that happens with. I think if you if you if you could, uh, I'm, I'm not going to use Donald Trump as an example too much, but if you could dig into Donald Trump's psyche, you would find something very different to the public portrayal of him or yeah. the way that he portrays himself in public. I think that's also true of Gordon Ramsay. Yeah. So I, I would, I, if I, 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 I um, Greg Wallace is an example of someone who seems quite authentic. Yes. Very open and see, and you can yeah. imagine that he would be just like that if you did. Yes, him. yeah, yeah, exactly. And I think that is better to reveal your flaws and imperfect. I mean, because he's Greg Wallace is quite flawed, but he's authentic. If that makes sense. Yeah. But, but, but it's for, I, I would probably choose probably the Dalai Lama or someone or Nelson Mandela or someone like that, who's has got a very strong personal brand that is more than. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm an expert in this or that. It's kind of more of a humanitarian brand, let's call it. That's that would be my. That, I mean, that's just my personal preference. I wouldn't say. I wouldn't say uh, that's. Yeah, that that would be my response to that. Thanks, Ben. Awesome. Well, thank you for your two questions, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, if we don't have any more questions, um, if you've all, if you want the slides or if you want any of the videos that I talked about, uh, feel free to uh, ask for them in the chat. Um, and I will just close with my classic: uh, go for it. So, thank you very much for joining us. I hope you found value in that. Um, we will. Um, we don't publish these videos, but we do uh, send them out to our email list. Um, uh, they're on. They, they're on listed on uh, YouTube. If that makes sense, uh, so you will probably find yourself on in one of our emails at some point if you uh, if you stick with us. Uh, and if you want to have a chat, feel free. Um, I'm here, um, more than happy to have a chat. So thanks very much for joining us, and take care, and have a brilliant bank holiday weekend as well.